Greetings from Bermuda, this is BDA Limey and welcome to Opus Magnum. So this is a Zactronics game uh, that was released uh, about three years ago now. Um, like many other Zactronics games, uh, Space Chem, Infinity Factory uh, and a bunch of others, uh, it's a game uh, about optimization uh, and solving puzzles in the most efficient way possible. Uh, I played a little bit of this when it was out on uh, Xbox Game Pass, uh, but I never actually finished it. Uh, so I decided that I would come back to it now uh, and start over from the beginning again uh, and see if I could make it all the way through. Uh, so let's jump in. Prologue, the transmutation engine. Transmutation lab rules. Access is restricted to graduate level alchemical engineering students and faculty only. Any exemptions must be approved by the Chancellor. Your student alchemist permit and sigil with you at all times when in the lab. No food or drink is permitted in the lab. Do not sit or lean on transmutation engines or their related components. Please keep the area clean for everyone else. Means you, Anateus. Henley Servin. I'm amazed you put off learning how to use the transmutation engine for this long. Mateus Vaya. I was concentrating on working by hand. You know that. Mateus, we're about to graduate. I know. That's why I need you to summarize all this for me as fast as you can. Okay. Let's. Hey, Lama. How you doing? go. How do I start? Open. Okay. These are reagents. They are the input materials for doing alchemy. This is a product. Your job as an alchemist is to build machines that combine reagents into useful products. <laughs> cool. Good. Glad you uh, glad you liked it. Yeah, I'm kind of taking a, a break from Roguebook now, I think, until the game actually comes out. I played a lot of the demo. Um, I felt like I had to go until I'd at least beaten one of the final bosses. Um, but having done that, uh, I think, yeah, I'm just going to kind of leave it now until uh, until June when it comes out. Uh, so I still haven't seen the Avatar of, uh, of Needles. Um, but yeah, have you been playing it yourself? Complete puzzle, build all products to play, ah, press the play button below to start the transmutation engine. This is the instruction tray, instructions, tell a machine's parts what to do. Okay. What streamers? <laughs> Me? Cool. Okay. I look forward to uh, to seeing you back in June then. Um, yeah, I got the I did get the the pre order in the end, so um, be able to start playing properly. I think a couple of days before the official release, so that's that's kind of cool. Uh, so hopefully. Some of the things I learned from the demo will carry over. Okay, so, uh, right, let's carry on. We are still in tutorial stage. Understand so far? Of course, I knew this part was easy. That's why I never worried about it. 
Count you as a friend, Anatus, but sometimes you carry your genius alchemist act a little too far. Act. Okay, lesson. Not being taught the basics. Let's take the first and most important part of the arm. I understand. What's next? Wait, wait, wait. Don't rush ahead. You go through the material. You need to see this. Okay, so place an arm below, setting the rotation and length so the gripper is over the reagent. Then add instructions to the instruction tray to make it pick up the reagent and move it to the product output. Okay, so yeah, so we grab this arm from over here, we dump it. Uh, here, set the length like that. Uh, set it over the reagent. And then add instructions to the tray. So yeah, so this is called this line here is controlling what arm one is gonna do. Um, so right, okay, so this is the instruction for grab. So it grabs, it rotates 60 degrees clockwise and it releases and it then rotates 60 degrees counterclockwise. So grabs, rotates 60 degrees clockwise, drops it there, rotates back. This one just picks up things from here and drops them into there. Uh, same for number two, except it's got to go a bit further. So it's got two rotation instructions before it releases, and then two rotation instructions to come back. Uh, so for number three, we are going to start by grabbing the reagent. Then we need to do a 180 rotation. You can go either way. So one, two, three, and then release, and then three back in the other direction. And so our goals are explained down here. So we have to produce 18 products, and then we complete the level basically. Right, so arms pick up and move elemental proxies around the surface of the transmutation engine. Right, and you control their behavior with instructions. Yes, of course, of course. Okay, so that's arms, pivots. In some cases you'll want an arm to rotate what's, what it's gripping. You mean as opposed to the arm itself rotating. Right, in those cases you'll use pivot instructions. Okay, so place an arm below, then add instructions to make it pick up the reagent and move it to the product output. Right, okay, so this arm is moving product from here to here. We've got to move product from here down to here. He said we were going to need to rotate the product. I don't think we are, are we? Pick up, rotate, counterclockwise, 60, release, rotate clockwise. Oh, hang on, yes we are. Because we'll see when we do this. It ends up like that, which is Eh, wrong. Atoms may not collide. Okay, so yes. So we need to grab it, but before we drop it, uh, we then rotate, we pivot the, uh, the grabber on the end of the arm, basically. If that's gonna be up here, we need to rotate that by 30, 60 degrees still, okay degrees clockwise so that should do it okay. all very straightforward and simple how nice this is so easy for you why how long did it take you to learn all this 
Let's just keep going. Pistons. A piston arm is a special kind of arm that can extend and retract. Presumably there are instructions that control the piston. That's right. I'll demonstrate. So, piston arm. Okay, so that's a different kind of arm. Uh, we are going to pick up the reagent and move it to the output. So yeah, when we swing around here, we're going to be over this spot uh, here. And then we'll need to shrink the piston to um, allow it to get to the drop-off point. So, start by grabbing. Then we need to do two rotations that way. And then we need to retract one position, presumably. Uh, where's the drop? Ah, the reset instruction says right here the reset instruction will make an arm drop any held atoms and reset to its initial rotation length and position okay so that simplifies things and then this arrow shows us how many uh, time segments that instruction will take up Let's see whether we got it yep hey Muppets how you doing we are puzzly limey today yeah I've I've uh, I've burnt out on the on the deck building roguelikes for now, so uh, I decided to come back to uh, to this game, uh, which I played a fair amount of actually. Um, I don't know a year or two back when it was out on um, Game Pass, uh, but I never actually finished it before it left Game Pass. So coming back to it and starting it from the beginning again. Um, have you played this or any of the any of the Zactronics games? First Sactronics game I played was a game called Space Chem, uh, which is pretty similar to this actually. Uh, and I loved Space Chem. It was all about um, building molecules out of atoms, uh, building machines to assemble stuff and move it around. Um, and I put so much time into that game. Um, so yeah, it's kind of a puzzly optimization game. Never played this. Yeah, this, uh, I don't know if it's one guy or a small indie studio, but um, all of his games are, uh, yeah, opt optimization puzzles, basically. Uh, a lot of them have a heavy programming focus as well. Um, so I'm a developer by day. Um, so this kind of game sort of appeals to me, although some of the, some of the puzzles can get really hard. And it can feel almost too much like work. Uh, trying to solve some of them, um, but uh, yeah, I do I do really like the Zactronics games. So. Hence coming back to this, yeah, I also wanted some some game that I could kind of work my way through as well, rather than just doing, you know, run after run after run without kind of much sort of overall progression. I feel like I'm moving forward. I see piston arms can reach areas you can't with a normal arm. That's what makes them so useful. They cost a little more than regular arms though. I can use the reset instruction to make an arm return to its initial state from wherever it is. That's convenient. Just remember the reset instruction takes the same amount of time it would take to issue these individual instructions. Well, yes, of course it will. Of course. How are you doing anyway, Muppet? Are you, uh, are you recovered? Kind of back to normal now? tracks. What's next? Next we have tracks, which are like paths you can place on the board. Easier to show you. Mostly? Okay, cool, good. We'll burn a bit after. Yeah, I guess, uh, I guess these things take time to, uh, to heal. Well, fingers crossed that it's not too much longer. 
There is a track between the reagent and the product. Then place an arm on the track and add instructions to make it pick up the reagent and move it to the product output. Okay, so track mechanism. Then we can, whoop, not do that. We can do that. And then we grab an arm, drop the arm on the track, put that over the reagent. Uh, and then figure out how to do this. So I uh, start by grabbing. Move some arm on a track in the positive direction of the track. Okay, so yeah, each track has a uh, positive end and a negative end. So I guess each of these moves one position. Then we move two positions towards the positive end. We rotate uh, twice, I guess. And then drop and reset. Okay. See, when you place an arm on a track, the arm can move forward or backward along the path. Tracks can be quite powerful, but I'm still learning how to use them effectively in my designs. Could you put multiple arms onto a single track? I think so. Want we'll to try that? Have to experiment later. Okay, lesson transmutation. To perform transmutations, we use glyphs. For example, say I want to calcify an element. You place a glyph of calcification on the board and move the element you want to calcify over it. And a teus mean, yes, that's correct. At least let me go through the explanation first. I got all the explanation I needed. Okay, so use a piston arm and a glyph of calcification to turn the reagent, a fire atom, into the product, a salt atom, and move it to the product output. Okay. Piston arm, that is the fire reagent. So we're going to grab that. Basically going to do what it's doing over here. Um, we will do one rotation, which will end up here. Uh, and I guess as soon as it hits that, it calcifies, and then we pull it in. So we grab, we rotate the arm one position, and we retract the arm, and then we reset. Go. Okay. It's quite fast, this glyph. Yes. Welcome to modern alchemical engineering. Many transmutations are available as glyphs. Most of the common ones so far. There's ongoing research to develop more. You would know about if you paid any attention to recent developments in your field. Mateus. Okay, lesson, bonding. This must be the glyph of bonding. It is, to use it. Actually, why don't you show me how it works? Seems that's the way things are going here. Very well. Okay, so use two arms and the glyph of bonding to bond the two salt atoms together and move them to the product output. Two arms. Okay, so one arm there. Grab that one. One arm here. Grab that one. So now we've got to program two things. Let's do number three first. Okay, this is the glyph of bonding here. So, arm three has got to rotate counterclockwise one position. Um, okay, hang on, we're gonna, this, this is a bit trickier now. Or it's going to grab it and rotate one position clockwise. So now they're both over here. <clears throat> they will bond together instantly 
So we will get arm three to drop what it's carrying. Uh, and we will get arm four to rotate clockwise again. So now it's going to be pointing up here and there are going to be two salt atoms in these two positions here. No. In these two positions here. Uh, so then we have to rotate the end of the arm counterclockwise. And then drop and return. And we've got to make sure that this gets back at the same time. So it's going to stay where it needs to be. Uh, hang on. That's interesting. What's this going to do? Is it going to wait? Or is it going to get out of sync? I think it's going to get out of sync and it. We kind of need like a wait instruction. Because I think it's going to start running this again and arm um, four will not be back by that point. But let's, let's try and see. Okay, no, it does wait. Oh, except. <laughs> we made a mistake. Um, oh, we can't do it with arm four. Because that's going to be in the wrong place. Okay, so actually, let's just get rid of all this. Arm four needs to reset, and arm three has to carry it up. Then we do another rotation counterclockwise. We rotate the end clockwise, and then we reset. Um, and I think they do, yeah, it looks like they do all weight. go together for the next one. <coughs> Transmutation engine makes alchemical engineering far simpler. You could have been using it the whole time. Glad I did things the hard way for so long. Hope you don't like this in real life, Anateus. Hmm? This is real life. Okay, stabilized water. I think that's everything you need to know to use the transmutation engine effectively. Make one more product to make sure I get it. Okay, panning and scroll, oh boy, now it's opened up everything. Building area parts, train instruction tray can all be panned by right clicking anywhere within them and dragging. If you have a mouse with a scroll wheel, you can also use that to vertically scroll through the parts and instruction trays. Okay. Now when you will place products and reagents on your own, they are at the top of your toolbox. Okay. So place the products. Uh, okay. Okay, so this is what I've got to produce. And all I'm be, I've been given is uh, two, uh, two elemental waters. So what I'm gonna to wanna to do is use the calcification, uh, what's it called? Calcification glyph to turn this into salt is this element here. Uh, then bond them together with uh, the glyph of bonding. So actually, let's start putting things down. Uh, glyph of bonding, glyph of calcification. Um, and the cool thing with this game is 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 to 
build a solution that's as efficient as possible. Uh, so you want the arms to move as short a distance as possible, to do as little work as possible, basically. Um, but also the, the various pieces have to not get in each other's way. So let's see whether we can do this. So uh, one will rotate uh, this, what's it called? Water? Water? This water element across the glyph of calcification, which will turn it into salt, which will then end up in there. This one just grabs it, brings it in there. And then, are we gonna get that to the output? We can do, uh, no, not that. We can do that, and I th think that will work, let's see. So, in, uh, instructions for arm one. Uh, grab, rotate clockwise once to get over the glyph of calcification. And again, to get over there. In the meantime, arm two is grabbing and rotating. Oh, hang on, I've got those the wrong way around. I haven't, they're both going clockwise. Uh, go clockwise, that puts it in there. And then once it's done that, arm two's job is done, so it just resets. Whereas arm one just keeps going. It rotates again, which will bring everything over here. It should be in the correct orientation. And then it just resets. Let's see whether that works. Ah, uh, not quite. Okay, so I've got to rotate. Uh, actually, no, I, don't, I can just do that. Okay, so here we go. So this is the the meat of uh, every level, basically. Is it's, it's it's usually not difficult to build some kind of machine that does the job uh, eventually, uh, but how efficient can you make it? And there's three uh, metrics that which every solution is assessed by. Um, how much does your solution cost? Each part that we use costs a certain amount of money. Um, we were, uh, yeah, so, so our solution is this uh, vertical line here. We always cost 60 gold, uh, which you can see from the histogram is uh, what most solutions uh, end up costing. Uh, it took us 45 cycles to complete all the products. Uh, and again, that's where most people end up with their solutions. Uh, and the area is how many of the hexes are covered by either your machinery or by the products as you're moving them around. Uh, and we actually were more efficient than the average here. Um, we took an area of 10, and it looks like most people are up uh, a little bit higher than that. Um, so yeah, the cool thing with this game is, is you can play around with different solutions. Generally, it's not possible to have one solution that's gonna do the best in all three of these metrics. Um, but you could build one solution that's optimized for cost, maybe a different one that's optimized for speed, uh, and uh, another one, again, that's optimized for area. Sometimes, like, two or two of those will... You'll have one solution that does a good job in, in two of those metrics. It's usually hard to find a solution that's good at uh, all three. Anyway, for the tutorial level, I am happy with that. So, what are your plans after you graduate? I think I'll be a head alchemist for one of the august houses. That's bold. 
right out of school? Why not? True enough. No ambition could be too great for you. And yourself? I like it here. I think I'll stick around and hopefully become a professor. Do you seem to have an affinity for teaching? Think so? Well then, may each of us realize his opus magnum. Opus magnum. I've always found that to be a rather pretentious term, but I agree with the sentiment at least. Why are you laughing? Anateus Vaya found something pretentious. Tell me more. Okay. Chapter 1. Life in a Great House. Imperial University College of Alchemical Engineering. Dear Anateus, congratulations on your appointment to the position of head alchemist to the House Van Tassen. I am very pleased to see you find a position in line with your talent and abilities. As you prepare to leave the academic life, I want to offer a word of advice. The politics of the city are much harsher and more dangerous than those of the academy. You are a singularly gifted talent, and I would hate to see you get caught up in these conflicts. The alchemist's place is not to sink to the level of those around us, but to rise above them in service of our art. Best of luck to you. Dean Ptolemeo, Professor and Chair, College of Alchemical Engineering, Imperial University. Tassin's New Alchemist. So, how'd it go? Nightmare. Armand kept going through his old stories about honour and righteousness. Lady Van Tassen looks like she's embalmed. Frederick spilled food down the front of his shirt. What a brave man you are, surviving a formal dinner. It really is difficult though, I can't stand the stuffiness. Our man didn't remember my name. Captain Gelt had to prompt him several times. To be fair, you only started rather recently. Yes, I suppose it's too much to ask. It's such a complicated, burdensome thing. To remember one single name, the name of your new alchemist. The one who graduated at the top of his class from the College of Alchemical Engineering. Anateus. See? You remember my name just fine. Think Armand would know my name? Keeping in mind I've been here my whole life. Maybe next time you can go in my place. You might not even realise it's a different person. Alchemist, provisioner, which way are you again? Mm, yes. Mm. Get us in trouble. I've been doing this for years. Well, this is an odd first project. I feel like someone's having a laugh at my expense. Why? Were you asked to create the Philosopher's Stone? Close, actually. One more guess. Transform lead into gold? Yep. Apparently there's an old Van Tassen lead mine. And wouldn't it be better if it produced gold instead? Our man suggested it so casually. Sounds wonderful. Time to put your university degree to the test. Okay, glyph of projection. The glyph of projection consumes an atom of quicksilver and promotes an atom of metal to its next higher form. By doing this repeatedly, even lead, the basis metal, can be transmuted into the finest gold. Okay, glyph of projection. Okay. It brings an atom of metal in on this side. Quicksilver on that side, and every time quicksilver is moved in, the element on this side goes up a level. Somewhere, uh, there will be a chart. So common alchemical primes and their transmutations. Everything around us is made from combinations of a small number of underlying elements. By studying these elements and their transmutations, the alchemist learns to understand the workings of the universe itself. So, okay, so we take lead, yeah, and we use quicksilver, we can turn it into tin. Quicksilver to turn it into iron, to 
copper to silver to gold. And that is the desired output. And we have lead as an input. Actually, let's spread this out a bit. Okay, so we're going to need this thing. And we're going to be using this, which is going to go into here. So we'll set up an arm to move that. We are going to be uh, using that. Moving that into here. And then when everything is done, done that will go to the output as gold okay so we've got to do this transmutation how many times one two three four five times so programming for arm one grab the actually let's do arm two uh, grab the lead Move it counterclockwise, one position, so it ends up here. And then we're going to wait. So arm one will grab the quicksilver. We'll rotate one position clockwise, so it's over here. The glyph will then transform uh, the lead that we've got here up into tin. And then we need to repeat a segment. So how do we use the repeat instruction? Create a sequence of instructions that will repeat the preceding set of instructions. Okay. So rather than having to do this manually every time, we could just put one of these and it will do... Actually, we don't want that because we need to reset. So that moves it, drops it, moves it back to here. So that does it once, twice three times, four times, five times, and now this should be gold. And arm two can do another counterclockwise rotation. And it can start doing it uh, after that's dropped. I wonder how the timing works. This will line up with a uh, with one of these, a drop and a reset. I think that should work. And then that will reset. So let's see. Two, three, four, five. Boom out. There we go. Okay, all completely average, which is good. Uh, so average cost would be possible to get it slightly cheaper, but uh, probably kind of hard. Um, an average number of cycles, it is possible to do it faster, interestingly. Uh, but that's as small an area as we can make our machine. Uh, or at least if it is possible to go smaller than that, nobody has ever done it. Um, I'll keep I'll keep pressing on. <laughs> the uh, like the obsessive side of me is is thinking, oh, it would maybe we should try and try and build a solution that that could do it fast, um, and not worry about these other constraints. But still early games. Let's carry on. Can you make lead into gold? I can scarcely believe it. Well. At least it's finished with now. Like asking a fish if it can swim. Taking this remarkably poorly, Alateus. I was expecting a challenge, that's all. Sounds like you want a chance to show off. Shall I go that far? Nope. Okay, so we have a choice in which order we tackle things now. Uh, let's just keep going through them in order. So, face powder. 
Have you seen the Lady Van Tassen recently? A few days ago, why? You notice how pale her face is? Oh, she's well known for her power. Why? Did you ask someone to... Did someone ask you to do something about it? Armand himself did. It seems it's gotten worse lately. People are whispering about her health. That's unfortunate. Lady hasn't had an easy time of things. I'd hate to see her slandered on top of it all. Okay, product, face powder. And all we have is Elemental Earth. So. Uh, calcification transmutes any of the four cardinal elements into neutral salt. Now the difference between this puzzle and the one we had in the tutorial is we've only got one reagent to work with and we're going to need to use that for both the salt and the earth component of the product. So let's start with the salt. So we'll make an arm that will grab uh, the element from here. It will move it over the calcification glyph, which will turn it into salt. Um, okay, how can we... So we could do something like put a glyph of bonding over here so then it rotates into here. But the trouble is then we have to get um, we have to get an earth into the other side of this glyph of bonding. And that is going to be more challenging. So let's think about this. We could do it like this, but this feels really inefficient already. So this might be a good solution in terms of... Gee, can they both grab at the same time? This might be a good solution in terms of... Uh, mm, cost, maybe. So what I'm thinking is we uh, arm one grabs the earth, it rotates it all the way around here, calcifies it and brings it in here. So it just basically goes in a circle. Uh, meanwhile two brings this one here and then two can take the product. Uh, where will it be? We'll have uh, that one there. Actually it will be like that won't it? Hmm, it'll work, but it's not going to be very efficient. Let's uh, let's let's just do it. So yeah, a good way to play this is is just to start by just getting any solution that gets the job done. Basically, whatever first comes into our head, and then we'll optimize from there. So one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five rotations. We'll get it over the bonding. And then back to the beginning. I wonder if we can grab at the same time though. We may not even be able to do that. Suspect, I suspect not. So I'm going to wait a beat to, for arm two to grab it. Uh, and it's going counterclockwise. Going that way. One position. And it's going to wait there. Uh, and then here it will go one more position which will bring it around into here and then it can reset. Let's see whether that even works. Eh. Thought I'd waited, okay. Guess not. Let's just shuffle all that down.
try that. Okay, it works. But it's not efficient. Okay. Cost is not bad. But plenty of people have done better. Number of cycles. Uh, yeah, it's kind of slow. And the area, although we've kind of hit the sort of most common size for the solution, uh, it's also bigger than it needs to be. So what we can do is we can, uh, we can do that and copy that solution and then we can open it. We can have a look, see whether there's any edits that we could do. So what we could do, we don't have to rotate it all the way around. We can just bring it uh, here and then back again and that will be faster. So we would do two positions clockwise instead. And then one counterclockwise, and then reset. That's actually gonna let us do that, I think. Uh, is that right? So two clockwise gets it over the calcifier, bring it back to the bonder. That will be there at the same time. Yeah, I think that should work. Much better, okay. Right, so the cost is the same because we've used the same components. Uh, our area is reduced because we weren't going all the way around the circle. We were just cover covering the, um, a smaller number of hexes as our solution ran. So that's nice. Uh, and then, yeah, it's basically as fast as it's possible to do that solution. Um, so, yeah, we, we could, if we wanted to uh, try another solution, we could, again, yeah, try and figure out a way of doing it cheaper or over less area, but I'm kind of comfortable with what we got there, so let's carry on. This should help the lady's face look less pale, though it's quite a superficial solution. Who can really say what troubles the Lady Van Tassen? Not for us to know. You ever heard her speak? She didn't say a word during the dinner I went to. I remember her speaking to me once or twice when I was a child. Odd. It's another of those many Van Tassen mysteries, I suppose. One gets used to them after a while. Okay, let's make some waterproof sealant. You know much about ships, Concordia? Our merchant fleet delivers goods from overseas about once a month. Why? Captain Gelt told me they used to have some kind of substance they put on the hull so they don't rot. Don't know anything about it. Have you ever been on a ship? I haven't, no. You? Not at all. Sounds ghastly. Being tossed around on the ocean and then getting eaten by sea monsters. Not sure all sea voyages are like that. Enough of them are. Okay, glyph of multibonding. The glyph of multibonding can create up to three bonds at once. Which is fortunate because we need to make one of them. So, uh, one air and one water. And somehow we're going to turn them into that. So, obvious ways to use the glyph of multibonding. And we can dump one. So we could use arm number one to drop this in. Now, how is this going to work? at what point it creates the bond. Okay, I think we need to do some experimentation here. I have a feeling. So, well, let's see. Okay. So, arm one will grab that element. 
I have a feeling they all have to enter that glyph at the same time. But we'll see. So two counterclockwise rotations. We'll get it here. Then we drop it. Uh, in fact, we can we can just reset. Uh, and then grab again. And do one counterclockwise rotation. And then that will be there. The other one will be there. And we need to make sure this one is there at the same time. So we actually won't do anything with that until here. And then we'll rotate it in there. And then we'll reset that and we'll reset that. Uh, that's not going to work. It's going to create it, but we're then going to move it to the output. So who's best place to do that? Who isn't doing very much? Let's say two does it. So at the point that one res uh, here, one is going to be letting go of the element here and moving back over here. Ah, uh, where will this go? We'll go uh, no not like that we'll end up like oh uh, hang on no it work there I think so here arm two is going to be here so we need to do one two counter clockwise rotations and I think that will get it over there in the right orientation as well and then we can just reset Ah, okay. I actually cannot move it over the reagent spot. Okay. That limits the movement a bit. Okay, again, just do something that will work. So, can I change this to a piston arm without resetting everything? I can. So we change this to a piston arm. We... Two can go back to the beginning and instead of one resetting, when it's got it here, what it's gonna do... This is not going to be efficient. Yeah, well, let's just do it. Let's get it working. So one will grab, will have hold of the um, what's it called? The product here. And if we extend by two positions, we'll move it to the output spot. So that is the extend. So we extend once, we extend twice, and then we go back to the beginning. Okay, so it's going to do the job, but it's going to do it slowly and expensively because I'm using a piston arm and it's covering more space than I would like it to. So, okay, well, that's actually better than I was expecting. In terms of area coverage, we were actually relatively efficient there. It is possible to do better, but probably quite hard to by the number of people who've managed it. 
terms of speed though, our speed is terrible. Uh, and our cost is, is average. Possible to get it cheaper, but uh, it's not too bad. Let's see if we can do something about this number of cycles, because I really don't like that. So we'll copy that. Open that. So how could we speed this up? Um, well, we could certainly speed it up. Uh, at the expense of more cost. Actually, by doing this, so we, we can use one. While this arm is taking the air to this spot, the glyph. Arm three can be taking the second air to this spot. Um, and then actually arm three could probably take the product out. And that might even, how much is the piston? So the piston is 40 gold. Whereas, which is the same cost as two pistons that um, two fixed length arms. So actually we've not changed our cost at all there. Uh, I don't know whether we're going to end up covering a slightly larger area, but we should be faster. So one grabs and then resets. Can the arms collide with each other? We're going to find out. So three needs to wait. Uh, I think we discovered last time he needs to wait until there to grab. And then rotate clockwise. Which means that now this needs to start earlier. Uh, we do not need to grab a second element with this so we can get rid of all of that. We don't need the extension. So that's no longer a piston arm anyway. And then the only other thing we need is one extra rotation of arm three to bring it product to the output. And then we reset arm three. Let's see how that goes. Ooh, I like, I like. Oh, look at that a thing of beauty. So from cycles being up here, we're now basically as fast as we can go with the cycles. Um, is that area, is that a bigger area? Oh yeah, okay, so our best um, is covering an area of 12. Now we're at an area of 14. But yeah, cycles have gone down from 81 to 36. Cost is unchanged. That's pretty good. I am happy with that. With this sealant ready, the fleet should soon be ready to set sail again and bring back, well, whatever it brings. We're loaded with all kinds of things. Cloth, pottery, mineral ores, rare herbs, strange stones, sometimes even animals. It's like a good business. I'm not sure. Those contracts were drawn up centuries ago. I doubt even our man knows the details. Okay, hangover cure. Known I was to be tasked with curing a hangover. Oh, I better know who asked you for that. It was Captain Gelt, wasn't it? How'd you guess? It would be good for him to be at least somewhat functional in the mornings. Yes, seems prudent for the head of security for the entire house to be not totally incapacitated on a regular basis. Let's not go too far. Okay. Distilled water. <laughs> Hangover cure. All right. Uh, so what we got? We have one reagent. We don't have to use the glyph of multi-bonding. It's worth noting we could use two. I think we could use two regular glyphs of bonding as well, but. Uh, let's just stick to this for now. Uh, 
Okay, we are getting trickier. So we need to do two calcifications to turn uh, the water into salt and then just move the final water into position here and then somehow get it all out. So yeah, there's a, there's a definite trade-off here between speed and cost. So we, we could have two calcification glyphs, two arms, and we could do we could produce these two at the same time as each other, or we could just have one setup for producing those. Um, and then do it twice. I have a feeling we're not gonna get away without piston arms. We do have tracks as well, which we need to remember. We haven't used yet and they're quite cheap. should use a track to bring to bring the salt into the right position how could we do that Try using two of these this time. This thing feels a bit unwieldy. These bonders is cheaper than one of these as well. What if we make salt? Make salt. Slide down the track. Well, we 
could do something like that. Do the two salts. That would be quite nice. <laughs> but then the problem is getting one of these waters to this spot. Seems like it'd be incredibly inefficient. Um, what if I start by grabbing this? Moving it along the track to there. Feels kind of inefficient, but let's try it. Grab that. Oh, it's doing a lot of work as well. This is going to be a slow solution. Crosses here, whether we'll. All right, let's just try. It. So uh, one is going to grab, and then we're going to move along the track in the positive direction. One, two, three spots. One, two, three, and then return home. We're then going to grab and rotate counterclockwise twice. Two of these end up in here, they're going to bond to each other and then we'll bond when the other one gets there. Um, and then when we've done that, um, actually, no, we don't want two to revert, we want two to stay. Just see how far we get. Round atoms may not be moved in two different directions. Oh, okay, because I never actually uh, reset. One. Do that. Oh, that did work. Good, yeah. <clears throat> Cost is good. A bit slower than maybe it could be. Not surprised. Take a copy of that. See whether we can make it a little bit faster. So what's making it slow is the fact that this has to traverse all the way over here and then come back and then Do this thing. I 
thinking we, you know, we could have used the piston to kind of push this into the middle, except for the fact that it's because of where we've put the glyph of calcification, uh, it would get calcified on root. Not sure that there's really. If we made this a piston, we could. No, it's not going to be very efficient. track. doing it that way I'm gonna to have to rotate all the way around here which is well yeah can't even use piston arms because I can't move it back over I kind of feel like there's got to be a way to do it with one of these Keeping these next to each other. And the salt ends up away from the water. I'm gonna bond the salt and the water together. Do this, I could grab it, push it. Salt 
This could mean I'll grab water, bring it up there. So we can have water there. This takes the salt across here, brings it back. Well, it takes the water across there, turns it into salt, brings it back. So then we have a water bound to a salt. And then we just need to where's the waters here the salts there we just need to bind that water to another salt Let's see whether we can make this work So one grabs it, moves two positions along the track, turns it into salt, moves one position back along the track, puts the salt over here. In the meantime, we do this here, wait one more turn maybe. move back one is gonna let go and what two is gonna do oh, it's gonna if it moves it's gonna move it over the glyph of calcification ah but it's already calcified so two is gonna what does it need to do it needs to rotate the end It's going to be any if it's having to rotate all the way around here. Do this again. Two and then reset. I 
kind of shift the whole stack of instructions as well. Kind of remove everything. Oh yeah, I can do that. There we go. Let's start two first. Grab it. One, two, three, four. Block. One, two, three. Four. And then the water is there. In the meantime, let's just grab that. Move it there. Then it's gonna go and grab. It's gonna repeat. Grab another one. Move it there. While it's doing that, two needs to rotate the thing on the end counterclockwise. I think it can do here. Twice. See where that ends up. Ah, okay. So we've got the right shape for the molecule. And now arm two needs to be the one Clockwise. Now, at which point? There. Yep. So, if we put the output there, that will work. And then it resets. Now, is this going to be any faster than our first solution, though? I don't know. No, it's slower. 93 cycles rather than 83. It's cheaper, though. We have a cheaper solution. Uh, and its area, uh, oh no, its area's got worse. Fifteen rather than fourteen. Not much of a difference there. It's slower. Which is a bummer given that's what we were trying to uh, speed up. I think I'm instinctively trying to minimize the area of the solution. If I spread it out a bit more, it might be easier to improve things. I also wonder if I could do something more efficient if I was using pistons. And one more possibility. 
is pistons. Not worry about the cost at all. Cost is no object. What could I do? Use a piston to push that. Use a okay, cost is truly no object. I use a piston to push that into there. Uh, do the track first. No. Piston to push that into there, and then I slide it over. Oh no, this needs to be. Whoa, let's not do a track like that. Um, piston to push it into there and rotate. That would work. What if I did something similar here? Piston to push it into there, rotate. I, I just feels like there's going to be horrible collisions. <laughs> let's see. Uh, so piston one, pick up and extend. Oh, hang on. That's the output. Ah, uh, no, that screws me up. This thing gets in the way. Well, grab, bring here, push, grab, bring here, push. Ah, it's just contention for this reagent. But there's nothing I can do about that. So one does push, push. Then two goes. Grab, rotate counterclockwise. Push, push. And then three goes, grab, rotate clockwise. And push, push. Um, I'm not sure that can drop it off. I can drop it off. And then this will just extend one more time and then go home. How about that? Whoa, 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 stop. I went wrong. Re grabbed, rotated. What the heck went wrong? Push, push. Okay, that did it there. Extend, meanwhile. Why is this not rotating? Is this arm blocking it? it should be, see arm three should be rotating here. It is definitely not. Oh. I've got the wrong symbol. I want that. Oh. Eh, eh. Fail. One, two, three. Okay, what went wrong there? Three grabs, rotates. Now it's extending once. And again and it should extend again why did this not cause it to extend again I 
tried to add another one in. No, something is... That's very weird. Oh, is that as far as it can extend? Maybe that's as far as it can extend. Okay, hang on. Well, let's see whether we can do this with... Two of these instead. So one and two go first. One is only going to need to extend it to there. Two is only going to need to extend it to there. And then they will be bonded. And we want to put another... you tell me how far these things can extend? we can extend any further. Ah, uh, so what if it rotated instead? faster 60 cycles but much more expensive and much bigger area not surprising faster. We put this here and add an extra extension to number one. Uh, and then that end up like that. Let's try that. Uh, but one less extension for 
that as well. Maybe faster but more expensive. Yes, 49 cycles. Okay, and we reduced the area as well, which is good. Previously 23, now 17. Still not our best, but still good. Uh, and the cost is high because of all the... Because of all of the pistons that we're using. Which we... Actually, yeah, the calcification is, <clears throat> is cheap. We could actually improve things. I think we could replace piston three. Oh, uh, I'm gonna say I think we could have replaced that with a. Wait, we can replace piston. No, we can't. Ah, <laughs> uh, no. Not gonna work. We can't put anything in the middle here. So yeah, maybe that's the best we can do. Yeah, so that solution is the best for area. This one is the best. Uh, well, okay. Fastest. Smallest. Uh, and that one is the cheapest. But yeah, three different solutions with which expels it. I don't know. Between the three of them, we have done, we could get a little cheaper. We could get a bit smaller area if we really tried. Okay, so yeah, the thin line shows you where this solution is. The thick line shows you our best. Okay. There are days when I could use such a cure myself. Yeah, have some. What? This isn't for me, Anateus. Get caught. It's fine. There's a secret. My amazing hangover cure is water. Just plain water? Captain Gelt has no idea. Apparently he loves it. Works wonders, he says. That's rather funny. Also, I'll never trust an alchemist again. Shouldn't. Okay, hangover cure done. Okay, well, I'm going to take a quick two minute break here uh, and then I'll be right back with some airship fuel. So don't go away, I'll be right back.
Okay, well I have a glass of my own hangover cure here. Well, I have no hangover. Uh, so let's continue. And let's make some airship fuel. Captain Gelt asked for something to put in the Van Tassen airship. Apparently it's out of fuel. Oh, that old thing. First time I've heard someone say that old thing in reference to an airship. Last time I remember the airship actually in the air was for the celebration of Frederick's birth. Clearly Frederick disappointed his grandfather so much they never took it out again. Ha! More likely it's simply been out of fuel this whole time. Whole time? Serious? After the old head alchemist died, we had an interim one for a while who was not great. Okay, well, let's be great and make some airship fuel. So, two fire, two salt. And we have three reagents to work with. Okay, so... Kind of one obvious way that jumps out at me. Well, it's not using all the reagents. That maybe seems a bit inefficient. It's just to have a system for producing uh, these two. So the fire joined to a salt. Uh, and then another system for joining the two fires together. So, how might we do that? With a cliff of calcification. Now, do we have the space to work in here? Rotate that into there. Rotate this into the bottom. Do that there, 
I'll drag that into there. two into there. into the plan. I into the I'll into the Rotate it. Mm. 
Oof, okay, how's this gonna work? Not very efficiently, I would guess, but let's try. So one grabs, rotates counterclockwise. Meanwhile, two goes counterclockwise twice. Grabs it. And then resets. And at that point, three can grab it. And rotate counterclockwise. to the right and then pivot twice. Where would that end up? End up in the right place. is where we end up. Okay, I need to repeat. Repeat. About that. Ah, it does have to rotate. So after it moves back, Clockwise. And then grab. And then move. Okay. That is then in the right place. But... How do we get it out in the most efficient way possible? Well, we could extend the track. Oh, I think we could rotate twice. That then uses up a lot of area, but. Right orientation. Uh, 
Okay, why is that? Salt. salt down here and how do we get it out there back out of here but build something that works and then go from there so if we bond that So one grabs counterclockwise twice. That gets the salt in there. Meanwhile, two has grabbed going clockwise twice. Uh, I think that will be okay. Yeah, that will get there first. resets and it repeats no it doesn't repeat resets grabs clockwise once and then resets meanwhile number three grabs Clockwise once, clockwise twice. Uh, whoop, hang on. 
Let's tap through that. Ah, yeah, okay, that's what I didn't want to happen. to wait. No! Oh. oh, hang on. Two is dropping too early. Oh no, two needs to do three rotations, that's the problem. So maybe we can do this. No, we can't. Okay. And two releases, starts moving back, three and one wait there for it, Who's that, no, needs to go one more space. Start moving three in the positive direction. Actually, that can three can move before then because it's going to have bonded here. So, one, two, three spaces along the track. one too many. Two spaces along the track and then it will wait there. Meanwhile once we get to here then one can start moving along the track. It needs to move one, two, three, four ultimately. Two, three, four. And if we've done everything right that should take it to the output. Oh no, sorry, that's one, needs to do that. Two, three, four. And then reset. And three needs to reset. Oh, three can actually reset right here. Just gonna leave it there. And one, Ah, no, okay, we've got to move at the same time. Otherwise they bond incorrectly. So, where is that? We've got to go at the same time. Yes. Now three's letting go. One carries it to the exit. Okay, I think that will work. Feels slow because it's waiting on arm two. High cost, high cycles, well, above average cost, above average cycles, above average area. We could definitely do better than that. Uh, but let's copy that. And we at least mess this up. We have a record of what we've done. Um,
One that's going to get used twice has to travel the shortest distance, which means do something like that and put one in there, then we can come back and put one in there. And that's our two fire things done. There, that will be the same speed as things that are calcifying. Uh, I would like to keep this stuff on this side. It's going to take two turns to get there, or two cycles to get there. It's going to take two cycles to get there. Oh, and another two cycles to get there, actually. So really, we do want to, we do want this to be able to do it in one on both. If we go there, okay. Let's see whether we can work this problem. So at least then, in the time it takes, these. Well, actually, it's not quite the same as it's one two three cycles we can't we can't do any better than that oh well we could actually do better than that let's give us okay so if we're going for speed we could do that one there as soon as that's gone move that there these in there so then we've got our two bits but then how do we assemble those two bits? They're really in a bad place relative to each other. What if... Instead of that, we did that. And all we would have to do Oh, I don't know if we can get it out. We keep everything on top. this gonna work I like that ah relatively clear as an exit path and what we need to do is kind of move 
like this one down here and this one down here. Game on bonding the two fire elements in the middle with this. Pull that down there. we do it if we did something like that Might be fast. 
lots of moving parts. Okay, let's try it. So, number one. Grabs, rotates clockwise. Then resets. Number four. Uh, oops, that's not a grab. That's a Grabs, rotates counterclockwise. Resets. Yeah, okay, we've got to delay that. I always think they should be able to go one cycle earlier than it can. Okay, in the meantime, two has grabbed and has gone counterclockwise twice. Get the salt in there. And same for three. And they reset. Now, as long as one has gone back, six can go to this end of the track. And it can grab because two will have finished by that point. Then it can go plus, plus, and that should be on the exit. Cross the bonding and to the exit. So five goes at the same time. So when six is moving, five is moving to get its piece. to go one later. And then it also grabs. And then it moves back and then it resets. After it's done two, it resets. Okay, let's see what happens here. Shouldn't four already be there? Oh no, it can't yet. Uh, oh boy. Yep. Five releases. Six moves it to the exit. Wow, okay. That works. That's fast. Could be fast and small area. The area is not bad. Yeah, very fast, very fast. Uh, the area is not terrible. Could easily be a bit better, maybe, possibly not going this fast. And the cost is high, but that's okay. We kind of expected the cost to be high. We were really just aiming for speed there. So let's rename that to fastest. And let's just see whether we can do anything with that to improve either the area or the cost. Is there anything that we're using that we really need to use? A 
possibly not. I don't know whether we can better that. The speed, anyway. The only improvement would be whether there's a more efficient way to move product to the output here after we've made it. a way that we could uh, increase the area maybe by doing away with the tracks and just having these two arms to rotate the stuff into position. Try that. I would have to do something it's good, and it's going to collide with all kinds of stuff, probably. If we rotate that that way, that gets the fire there, the salt here. So we need. this fire to get over here. it and then it would end up there. We need to do the bonding there. So he rotated uh, there we kind of we need to put it Oh, maybe we can do that. Can we do that? And what to, extent, to what extent we can overlap the arms? Maybe that will work. Uh, <laughs> let's see. Let's get rid of the instructions for those two arms there. So five is just going to rotate. Counterclockwise. At which point is it going to do that? Going to do that there. So is six. I surely there's going to be a collision here. Oh, they went too early. Oh, they got to pick up first. Maybe they can pick up there. I'm to five. I'm five pick up. I guess there was nothing there. The five's got to go a fraction later. That's annoying. I guess because four had to wait for one. Ah! 
collides with one. Hey, Francis, how you doing? How are you? Been up to? Ah, I didn't think it was going to collide with that. Have you played this game at all? Or any of the other Zaktronics games? because that's the reagent spawning spot, so there's no way I'm going to be able to rotate that past it. Just woke up and ready to get back to bed. Uh, this is a game called Opus Magnum. Uh, so it's a puzzle game, basically. Um, puzzle solving and optimization game. Um, so you, the idea is that you are building machines uh, and programming them uh, essentially to perform a series of instructions that will combine these reagents uh, into this output product. Um, and yeah, so so at its simplest level, you're just trying to build a machine that can yeah convert these things into the product. Uh, but then once you've done that, uh, there's three different uh, kind of axes that you're optimizing on. So you're optimizing along the cost. So which bits you choose to do your, uh, to build your machine cost, have various costs. Some are more expensive than others. Uh, the speed, how quickly can you get um, six of the products made and to the output. Uh, and there's area, so how much, how many uh, hexes on your kind of factory floor are being covered either by uh, elements or by the path of the arms as they move. So you're trying to minimize all of those things. Um, yeah, it, it's it's a very typical Zaktronics game. Um, I played a ton of a game uh, he made called Space Chem. Um, must be, you know, 10 years back now. And Space Chem was, was quite similar to this, uh, actually. So the idea was, yeah, you're assembling different atoms to make different molecules of stuff. Um, using similar kinds of uh, automation. This is, a, I guess, a more polished version uh, of Space Chem. Uh, but he's done a bunch of other stuff um, that, that, are, that are all, they all have this kind of idea of programming a system uh, to do stuff. Uh, so, as I'm a programmer by, uh, by trade, uh, it kind of appeals to me. Although sometimes it can feel a bit too much like work, it has to be said. Um, but yeah, it's good. This is not going to work. So I, I had a solution to this problem, but um, I thought I'd tweak it to see whether I could optimize it a bit. But this is not. Yeah, I'm colliding, and I don't. Uh, is there another way I could do it? I don't know. Maybe. And it's, it's also kind of cool because it sort of the game leaves it up to you as to how much time you want to spend on a problem. I mean, you could literally just, uh, you could just solve it. Um, so this was our uh, solution that works and goes pretty fast. Um, so yeah, so this is the, we're doing it in 38 cycles. Uh, and this histogram here tells you what other players' solutions, uh, tells you the distribution of other players' solutions. So you get an idea of where you rank against other players. Uh, but in terms of cost, it's a pretty high cost solution because we're using lots of pieces to make it go that fast. Um, and in terms of the area of the factory that we cover, um, I guess it's, it's, it's kind of medium. Oh, it's, it's average, uh, but potentially we could make it better. But it, but there's a there's a question of you know it's usually not possible to optimize all three of these things simultaneously. So you might have one solution that's fast, another solution that's cheap, and another solution that kind of minimizes the floor space that's used. Um, 
and yeah you could just keep going at the puzzles uh for as long as you like to get a set of solutions that you are satisfied with um so it would be nice to make something cheaper and smaller um, but i'm quite pleased with how fast we got that going so i think i'm just going to move on to the next one uh, and this there's kind of like a, a a story going on as well that's uh kind of justifying the products that you're making i guess Simple enough, now the Van Tassen airship can take to the skies again. Because the idea is we just built airship fuel, or we just made airship fuel. Sure, so long as we can find someone to pilot it. Doesn't seem too complicated. How about me? How about Captain Gelt? Or Frederick? That's a disturbing thought. Maybe we should pretend the airship is still out of fuel. Okay, so final uh, level in chapter one. Oh, is it? No, possibly not. The final one we have access to now, but I think this is going to be four more after this. Uh, so precision machine oil. Oh dear, oh dear. What is it now? Apparently Armand arranged for Frederick to go on a date with a young lady from another house. Oh dear. Now I have to make some machine oil. You what? The observatory. Frederick tried to take her there, but everything was rusted solid. Of course. Even better, Clara, the young lady, is from House Soria. He was probably hoping to prove our observatory is just as good as theirs. Oh, she must have been tremendously impressed all around. Okay, so this is the product we are making this time. Precision machine oil. We have elemental water and we need to uh, bond that to whatever these elements are. Uh, why did it tell us that here? Tin. So we have lead and we have quicksilver and so we have a way we can, we can turn lead into quicksilver. Uh, Sorry, we have we can turn lead into tin using the quicksilver. So that's what we're going to need to do. Uh, so lead, quicksilver, and to do that, we use the glyph of projection. So we're going to put the lead over here. Make an arm to grab that, drop that in there. We are going to put the quicksilver there. Make an arm to grab that and drop that there. Uh, so let's just do that. So grab, rotate, and revert. And grab, rotate the other way. And revert and then repeat and then at the end of that that will be uh, tin and then we can just put that somewhere else oops wrong way arm two going the wrong way arm two should be going counterclockwise Oh, no, it only needs to do it once, sorry. Okay, that makes it easier. Uh, then we can do that. Oh, don't let go. Uh, no, so one doesn't want to do that. One is going to grab it. Yes. is reverting okay okay so let's assemble this a uh, slightly different way so we'll make a we're gonna drop a product here
And then we will have, oh, no, I've got to bond it three in a line. So, how can we do that without getting in our own way? Let's try this. So three, we'll grab that. Oops. We will grab that and rotate counterclockwise. It's gonna have to wait for the tin to come in. We've got to have enough room to rotate it. That might work. Let's see. So we need to go clockwise instead now. And then while that's going off and doing its... Oh, we've got to wait for a bond. Which will happen... There. And then we're going to... We're going to pivot three times. Then we're going to repeat that. We're going to repeat that. Let's see how How that goes. Okay, so it's pivoting, which is rotating it round. And the second one comes in and gets bonded. And so now at this point here, Re needs to move it to the output. How's it going to do that? It's going to do that. It's going to use a track. And it will move. Now, where exactly is this going to happen? There, uh, maybe. but we can do it one earlier, I think. Go. Not bad. Nice. Cheap. Averagely fast. <laughs> and average sized area. Okay, that was pretty good. Let's rename that to cheapest. Let's copy. Let's see whether we can uh, improve maybe the area a little bit. Tricky. 
only kind of wasted area is this space here. I guess this space here, this space here. It's kind of tough to do anything about because the output molecule is three, three long in a row. So. I guess let's get rid of that. I don't know whether this will be better. Make a piston. The three grabs and extends. Oh, it's still got to do its rotation thing. It can't do that until here. One, two, three. And then it extends here. And then resets. Pretty good. I could be more efficient. Okay, that is stuff that's minimized the area. Uh, same execution time. Uh, slightly more expensive than what we had before because we're using a piston. Um, yeah, definitely reduce the, the footprint of the solution. So, the smallest. So the only thing we haven't looked at is can we make it faster? It doesn't seem like it's that much harder to make it faster. Uh, let's have a think about what we could do maybe what is it waiting on at the moment? to see. I mean, I guess one is slow because it's got to go up and through twice. faster though. <laughs> Still gotta grab it, move it over there, move it out. Nothing is actually waiting for anything else. Even when it's rotating this,
it's really tough to see how you could get that faster. Yes. Instead of one, we had a piston here that pushed it there. Something maybe like that, then all of that's there, and three would. it doing because uh, it's too long Expensive, same speed, bigger area. Yeah, I thought it might be better because uh, if we could cut out a cycle here, we could move it back from its final position. Mm. Uh, 
actually. What that suggests is that we want things... want things to be... 120 degree angles. Um, that work? Ooh, I'm not sure about that. It's just going to hit this. is a 60 degree rotation so that still doesn't help us now it's just taking two cycles uh i don't know i give up let's delete that one we have a small one we have a cheap one and um, both of them are averagely fast so i can live with that well frederick's dates at the observatory ought to go better now maybe he and clara can have a do-over I don't think it works like that. Do you see any other choices? Clara Soria? I believe House Colwyn has a young man around Frederick's age. Maybe that's what Armand is trying to prevent, no? Quite likely. Pity he has only Frederick to work with. One can only play the game with the pieces one has. Okay, well... I think we are going to stop there. Uh, so next time we will carry on. Uh, we're going to get to Sigmar's Garden, which is kind of like a mini game. Um, often in the Zactronics games, he kind of throws in uh, a mini game um, with them. And sometimes the mini games can be uh, a lot of fun in their own right. Um, I seem to remember this one's quite interesting. Uh, and then we will finish off the remaining three levels and then go on with chapter two. Um, anyway, uh, until then, thank you for watching. Uh, enjoy the rest of your day. And until next time, this is BDA Limey signing out. Bye for now.